Hi, welcome to Think Tech. This is the Arts in Hawaii, part of the Think Tech digital series. We are in the business of raising awareness of technology, diversity, globalism, and what's the other? Technology. Uh, this show is the diversity side of it, the arts in, uh, in Hawaii. I'm Donna Blanchard, your host. I am also the very proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. My guest today is Alice Inoue, and we are going to talk about her books as well as Happiness You. We're going to talk about all sorts of subjects. Uh, but before we get to Alice, remember that we broadcast live on the internet every weekday. All of our shows are streamed on Ustream.tv and Spreaker.com. And if you want links to our live shows or any of our previous broadcasts, go to thinktechhawaii.com. And if at any time you would like to join us in our studio audience, you contact j at thinktechhawaii.com, and that's J-A-Y. Okay, Alice Inoue served as a life guide, has served as a life guide helping thousands of people get clarity in their lives. She pioneered her own unique way to help others live more empowered lives. She's written five award-winning books with titles such as Be Happy, Feng Shui Your Life, and Destination Happiness. She also has a popular weekly column in the Sunday Star Advertiser called Go Ask Alice that offers life guidance. Alice, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Donna. I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, you're a happy person, aren't you? <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I um, want to tell everyone I got this book. You were kind enough to donate this book to our um, one of your uh, silent auctions that yeah, a few years the back, silent yes. auction for Kumukuhui Theater and I got it I thought that's interesting and I have to admit before this my only experience with feng shui was my friend Mary named her sailboat the feng shui <laughs> <That's> <laughs> literally and she said oh it means wind and water that's all oh yeah that's, that's all true that in Chinese it does it. yes yes um, but I have always been curious about it and I so I started reading the book and it's very interesting the the actual um, tenets of feng shui were mm -hmm. very near to uh, new to me and very interesting and uh, uh, that was cool but i have to say the way in which you wrote the book it is what really struck me your construct is a, a woman we follow a woman yeah. molly malone yeah who is learning about feng shui. She's going through all kinds of challenges stuff, yes. Yes, in her life, and she is reading about feng shui, so we, we get to know her reading the book and bringing yeah. those tenants into her life and then the changes that she goes through. Had you, how did that come to you? Had you read something like that before? No, what it was was I didn't just want to write another feng shui book do this, put this here, this is what this means. And I wanted to include so many client stories, but it was just really hard. And I thought, you know what, why don't I just create a fictional character that allows me to use all of my client stories through her. So as I talked about these different tenants, then I could basically, so I was using all, all kinds of information from different consultations I've done, and then wrote it through the eyes of Molly Malone. So even my editor, she said, I asked her, is this something that can be done? Is this like a style of writing? And she says, no, it's, I've never seen that, but we can do that. So that's what I did, and I thought it would be fun. Uh, it, it really is, and it, it keeps you moving through the book. <laughs> yeah, I found, I found that I liked, I ended up really liking Molly Malone, and she became like a real person to me. Yeah, I cared about her. Yeah, and at the end she was happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was really happy for her. Yeah. But yeah, seriously, I cared yeah. about her, and I learned from her, and I learned from you. <laughs> I love it. It was, it was really well done. I, I read a lot. I'm not thank just blowing you. Thank you, thank you. sunshine up your skirt. Yay. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about what you have now. You, you have these books, and we can talk a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah. Your life, yes. and we have... Just Ask Alice. Just Ask Alice, which is a lot... Are these pieces from the... No, it's totally different. This is... Oh. A, just Ask Alice is just all the questions that people used to always ask me. I mean, people still continue to ask me everything from challenging relationships to why is time speeding up to whatever, just all the questions that you can think about on life and living. So I just gathered those all together, and I just answered them in the book. Excellent. I'm anxious to, I have to admit, I haven't read that. I read your column. Oh, good. Yeah, very yeah. different from the column. This oh. one is more, more. I don't want to say more real, but the column is sort of limited to an environment, the home environment. So I try to bring in the body and the mind and the spirit into it, but it's basically a home-based um, publication because it's, it's the home section. Right. But just ask Alice, the book has way more detail about everything. Oh, yeah. fabulous. And then Destination Happiness. Yeah. 
And not pictured here because it's on my Kindle is Be Happy, It's Your Choice. Yeah, so that was one I of the second ones. I wrote that because um, I think we all go through times in our life and everyone has their own story about challenges that they have. And so it's interesting because mine always was that I was unhappy and I didn't know how to get happy. And it was just that awareness that we, we can become, um, and happy is such a word, it's different, it means something different to everyone, but just the idea that my spirit needed to be expressed in a different way and I was blaming outside situation and circumstances for my life and as a consequence, I did feel good. So that was sort of the journey of when people would say to me, why are you so happy? And then I, was, I thought like, gosh, you know, why am I? And I started thinking back, well, this is what I did. So it was just all the things I learned along the way so that I could live what I call a more balanced, centered life. So if I don't, if you don't mind happiness, people think, oh, happiness means you're always positive. Um, happiness is being up and excited all the time about life. And that's really not it because if you try to be up about life, that's not natural. And so what happens is then you get all this negative stuff happening, all this negative thinking, then you beat yourself up for being negative while you're trying to stay positive, And then you end up being very bipolar and you feel like you're neither happy. You don't know who you are and where you are. So happiness is, is recognizing that life will give you everything. And if you embrace life for what it gives you, then you're more centered and poised. So if you expect your life to be all good and you want to resist all the negative, you're going to have a hard time. But if you say, well, you know what? Life will always give me support and life will always give me challenge. When I'm overly challenged, I look for the support. When I'm overly supported, that's when sometimes we crash because we think that's how life should be. And then when the other stuff comes in, we crash. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it so it's does. sort of like, so I think of happiness as just being really um, looking at life from all the perspectives and recognizing that nothing is intrinsically good or bad. It just simply is. So how do we choose to look at it and how do we choose to move through it? And all the great things that we get from being challenged. It's always there if you look. Right. I agree. I, I don't think that I would have agreed about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but since, uh, well, it, uh, I'm, are you, do you feel you're influenced by Eckhart Tolle, by his work? Are you familiar? You know, I'm familiar with a lot. And I'll just say, Yes, yes, yes to every single mind, body, spirit. I mean, when I started delving into this, I read everything. I, I have hundreds, if not thousands of books. I have a list of everything I've read. So it's everything of your awakening and everyone gets something from everything. So, but then the, the, the brilliance of it is that you have your own knowing and you have your own understanding of what that means. Right. So everyone offers this great information and then you synthesize it, you process it, you find out what's true for you. And that's like that, that feeling of being like, yeah, I know who I am, I know why I'm here, and I understand life. And if we understand life, we can find the magic within it. You know, otherwise we're living in a fantasy of what life should be. Wow, I don't feel like I understand life. You know, <laughs> we're all still working towards it, but it's yeah. that, that layer by layer by layer by layer. You know, and when stuff comes up, we always learn from it if we choose to. And at life, you know, life is so hard right now. There's so many things happening. I'm also an astrologer by Nate by trade. That's my initial before all this feng shui. You may not even know that, but it started out from astrology. So talk about planetary positions and tension in the sky. And we are in a, a, a position right now where this year is, there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of extremes going on. We're being challenged with complexities that we've never really faced before. So part of it is like, how do we handle it? So that whole breaking free from what is comfortable so that we can find that next level of who we are is really kind of the theme that's happening right now. Mm. And, yeah. I, I, I uh, back to reading a lot of different books for a moment. I'm kind of oh, a yeah. ravenous reader yes. and, and uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer yes. and Debbie um, Ford. Yes, and, um, yes. Yes, yeah, they know Some all of my them. favorites. Um, but I was just talking with a friend the other day about the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I heard about it. I didn't to read it. <laughs> Robert Persick. I, someone gave me that book, I think when I was in college, years ago, and I started reading it and was like, ugh, I can't get through this. It's, it, it's a lot. It's a heavy and it's a, 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 quite a tome. Um, that happened three times and the third, over years, and the third time I picked it up, I suddenly could not stop reading it. And I still talk about that book all the time and quote from it and it just, it was the right time Fine. for me That's to read that That's how life is, book. right? We unfold and we unfold till, the, till we're ready to hear that next level of truth and then situations come, books come, and we start learning and evolve. That's so neat because you can actually see your evolution through that. Oh, yeah through books. <laughs> um, so uh, you have the books are available now and oh, they Amazon are... Oh, Amazon.com or you, you're down if you're in locally in town and in Ward, uh, Ward Center, Sedona, that store there, oh, they sell yeah, the books. Yeah. But yeah, Amazon.com. 
Okay, so you can get them very yeah, easily. Yeah, we can get them at our school at Happiness U. <laughs> and the, okay, that's the other piece of what you are doing now. Let's talk about happy. We'll start talking about Happiness U. Okay. And, okay. So you just started this six months ago. Okay, so let me, can I back up a bit? You back up as okay, far as you like. So you go back to 12 years ago, I was not into any of this at all. So I didn't, I was working in television, I had TV shows, I was doing, the, I was doing a bilingual newscast, I had stuff going on nationally, internationally, I was just really busy filming all sorts of stuff. And one day, and it was kind of told to me, and this is how I got into astrology, was years prior when I was at the peak of everything, um, he, he looked at my chart and he said, oh, in two years you're gonna be going on a different path. I was like, I'm not into that, I, I don't think so. But then, literally, two years later at that time, my whole everything, sponsorships, television shows, everything, Japan TV News, they all sold it, and I was down at unemployment. And I turned on my PDA at that time, remember PDAs? <laughs> and um, it said, April, astrologer says Pluto something something. And I was like, huh? Like, oh my God, like, how could this guy, how could he know? And I got so fascinated by the, the, the divine workings of the, of the universe that I thought, wow, I want to learn this. This is so awesome. So I went straight down to Borders. I bought a bunch of astrology books, and I never looked back. And that was like 12 years ago. And that was the evolution, the unfolding. So I got really into astrology, just learned everything about the planets and people and cycles and everything about human potential within, within the time you're born, fascinating life cycles. Then people start saying, oh, energy, uh, planets, you must do feng shui. You know, do you do feng shui? I'm like, no, but then... I thought, okay, so then I thought, well, if I understand the energy of the planets, let me learn about the energy of the environment. So then I went and I did all these feng shui courses. And then that was, then I realized no matter what the planets are doing, no matter what our environment is doing, if we don't shift and, and make a change for how we want to live our life, then no, nothing will happen. So then I got into human consciousness and learning, and then I went through the whole realms of spirituality and back and basically, um, it built a business on that. It was it's Alice you know, a life guidance. So I just guided thousands of people and wrote books and did all that. Then it came time to write my sixth book, which was at the beginning of 2013. I always write a book a year. And I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Finally, I just asked myself, which I always ask my clients, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And then, like I guess you could say the answer came to me, and or I just knew I wanted to teach people how to be happy. That was just like. I wanted to do that. I wanted to teach people how to be happy. I was like, what? Then I thought, I'm going to open the School of Life. Like, wow, the School of Life. Then people are like, School of Life? That's that's hard. Life is hard. I said, no, no, it's about learning how to find yourself to, to for self-growth and be happy, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, a school you can go to where you can learn. any. You can enter at any point and get to know yourself better wherever you need, from clearing your clutter to life purpose. So... I had the idea March 25th, the school opened September 1st, and we are in a six month now. Wow, you moved fast. Yeah. Because it was the right thing. You know, I, I was laughing a moment ago because you said, I asked myself, yeah. and you answered this, and you said, what? I know. Because that happens what? to me all the time. It's and like, I say, what? well, what do I really want? No, I don't yeah. want that. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's, um, it's just been, it's sort of a culmination, I would say, of the last 12 to 13 years, and everything that we offer as curriculum are things that actual clients come and always ask me about. I don't know how to say no. How to say no 101. Oh, I feel so guilty. Getting over guilt 101. I'm stressed out. Banish stress and worry. So all these classes are based on what people would come to me with issues and in infusing just ways to move through that particular thing. So we have a core foundation curriculum of very usable everyday kind of tools. In addition to now we have almost a dozen guest teachers that teach all kinds of other things, but it's always under that um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, not associated with any nonprofit or, or religion or network marketing. It's just a place to come to take classes to move yourself towards that next level. To learn how to be happy. To learn how to be happy, yes. Okay, we're going to take a break. Okay. We'll come right back to this. This uh, this is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. We are coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, and we'll be right back. I'm Hong Chiang. I'm Man, hosting Tuesdays okay. Asia interview <laughs> Good. at Think Tech Hawaii Good. between 4 to 5 p.m. Um, in my shows, and we bring to you important issues and events in Asia. Um, issues related to the culture, society, the environment, and history. We want you to be more connected to events happening in Asia and in the world. So see you there. Aloha, I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, 
Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. And we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Hi, we're back. This is the Arts in Hawaii. I am Donna Blanchard, your host and proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And I am talking with Alice Inoue, who I do want to say came into Kumukuhua Theater just a few moments ago. And yes. what did you say about our space? Oh, there? it has great energy. Yay. It feels so good in there. It just feels like it feels like a place where you can learn and evolve and grow and connect. It just has that that really um, just had that feeling. All I can say is I walked in, I had that feeling like wow, this is where people share. Like we're talking about human, hu humans, human beings. We all have one thing in common is we live on, co on planet Earth. And no matter what race, what belief, what all that, we're just, we all are looking for happiness, seriously. It's the one thing that our humanity has in common that we're looking for a greater purpose. We're looking for meaning. And so what I felt when I went into the theater was there was meaning here. And that's what people are looking for in life, meaning. Oh. People are looking for Kumakua Theater. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I really appreciate your saying yeah, that. That's, that's, that's sort of what that's I got, yeah. A nice, uh, nice and affirming. Um, so we were talking about the classes that you offer, and I'm very curious about, uh, so you have a class, um, uh, Getting Unstuck. Um, any of these classes, what's the average length? Oh, of the, the classes, classes are just about 60 to 70 minutes, and it's a... Uh, a $25 drop-in fee if you just want to come and take a class and get some insight. Uh, the, the school is a membership base, but you can be a guest at the school, but membership means that you're committing to yourself. And so we have a process where you come to a weekend workshop and uh, basically I've created a, a template that you ask yourself 800 questions about who you are, what's your purpose, why you're here. Basically get clear about you and your life and it, it includes all areas of your life, whether it's vocational, familial, financial. So if you don't sit down and ask yourself what you want, you're going to run on a system where you're working off of what everybody said you should do or you, you forget who you are. So it's about getting in touch with yourself. So as a member, you, you take this course and then we have member events every week where you can come and we can connect on a deeper level and of course take classes and, and such. So you see, I opened it because right now out of, the, out of Harvard University, it, it's now known, it, it is, um, studies have shown beyond a shadow of a doubt that unlike before where they thought happiness was something you're born with, happiness is a skill and it can be learned. Just like you learn typing, just like you learned how to act, it's a skill. So by seeing all the scientific data come out, I realized, like, wow, it's not just follow my train, I'm happy, and I can teach you how I became happy, but I can say, wow, look at all these studies, look at all these exercises, there's so much now. Before they studied depression and why people depressed, now they study happiness and say, why are people happy, and how can we change our neurological synapses, like how can we rewire our brain so that we have a different perspective of life. And this is all like proven, so that made it easy. I'm like, yeah, happiness can be learned, so let's learn it, here we have a school. <laughs> So, yeah, and uh, in the um, happiness is be happy, it's your choice, mm -hmm. you say that f you have a happiness set point and 50% yeah. of it is in your DNA and 50% of it, it is learned. your choice. Yes, yes, for, it's, it's learned. And then you think that money will make you happy. You think that romance or better health. But every time you say, like, I want this and you put a goal out there, like losing weight, once you get there, you're going to look for the next goalpost. So happiness eludes you when you think that you have to get somewhere to be happy or you need money to be happy. It really is. You have to look in your life right now and find your happiness now. So there are challenges. There are awesome things. You have amazing friends and support. You also have amazing challenges and, and things that stretch you. So within that, we have to be present with that. And that's the only way we can really feel like we're living in the moment of life versus waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And we can learn that. That's the key. It's not even if you say, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, and we do give a happiness test when you join as membership, and it's it's based on, on science. And then after six months, which is coming right up, we'll give our members another test to see if they increased in how they see the world. It's all about your perception. It's all about your reality. If you see it as this reality, you, you have to work on changing it in order to experience something different. Uh, there are times in my life that I look back on and I think, why wasn't I happy then? Yeah, I, sometimes you, yeah, you I, don't know. Sometimes I, had, don't know. I had so yeah. much there, and there was so much in front of me that mm -hmm. was, was so much excitement, but I wasn't really happy. And that, I think that, 
And I don't know what book I got that from, but after that realization, I, that really helped me to understand that it's just a choice. I'm never going to be a morning person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm never going to wake up and you know spring out yeah. of bed in the morning. That's just not who I am. However, I have been able to recognize when I am not feeling happy to say, how am I going to look at this time five years from yeah, now? Am I going to say, Donna, why weren't you happy then? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And then that thing that I go back to is like, it's not natural to be up and positive all the time. That's what I get with people so much. Oh, I wish I could be positive like you. I wish I could be happy all the time like you. And I'm trying to reframe that, that happiness isn't this butterflies and rainbow and unicorns hopping around kind of feeling that's like a, a, an irrational fantasy of life. Happiness is really being okay, understanding that everything in your life is exactly perfect, even if it doesn't feel that way. And, and taking steps to learn to see how you can benefit. My biggest, that we our school's guiding principle is nothing happens to you. Everything happens for you. So even if somebody betrayed you, you go, can you believe what he or she did to me? That jerk, how could they do that? Though they have no blah, blah, blah. We can go on and on about what happened to you. But how did it happen for you? What did you gain from this? What is it that what is it that you're getting? And when you're emotional, you, you don't want to hear that stuff. And so you have to grieve. You're human. You have to go through that. But the more we start looking for where the secondary gains are, where are the hidden benefits? Do you have more time now? Was there parts about the relationship that you really didn't like but you don't want to admit your ego is just being upset? So as you start to look at it, you start to find your balance. And that's, to me, happiness is being centered, really, and balanced mm. internally. So you must have some sort of, uh, you're, you're ringing a lot of bells with me right now with what you're going through, uh, what you're talking about. They, um, do you help people gain um, sort of a mental checklist to go through in those times of yeah, challenge? Yeah, I, so. I think it's like every, every challenge has its own unique things. And again, I'm not a psychologist, a therapist. I'm really none of those things. I'm just someone who has done a lot of reading and a lot of um, dealt with a lot of people and I understand that everyone has their own particular way of seeing things so sometimes it's just a gentle re-nudging of sorts sometimes it's just look here you never looked here and once you look there you're like oh my god I'm going through that door and sometimes you could be in this room of junk in your mind forever and then it's just look at that just sometimes it's just something and and I think I do it through the planets like I can say wow I can see why you're feeling this way by this time you'll be out of it so sometimes having something to look forward to because life cycles are natural sometimes it's like hey let's do something in your environment that will help you to um, to experience better energy to help you to shift out of that um, but lots of times it's just self self work and coming to, to classes and being with people like-minded individuals that are going to help you to look for what's good versus always looking for what's wrong and when you start to develop new pathways it becomes apparent to you like, wow, I'm seeing so much more than I ever did. So awareness, consciousness, yeah. trust in the bigger picture. When people are members of Happiness mm -hmm. You, it, then they have that kind of Yeah, they community. have that sort of community. It's just really great because everybody is going through stuff. It's not like you come to Happiness You and everyone's happy. It's not like you come and you're depressed. It's just you're just coming as a regular person, and we all got stuff going on. But it's just to be in an environment where we're going to work on moving towards a better understanding of life versus blaming life and hating life and blaming other people because we have no control over that. So recognizing what you do have control over and what you want for your life. And who are you? What is your authentic nature? Mm. You know, not trying to be someone you're not or to, it's, it's so much of it is about ourselves. And once we find who we are, then we can better help other people be authentic to who they are. And create a better environment. But, yes. Uh, but I have to say, sometimes a good kvetch feels really good. No, so I always tell people, go drink with your friends, get it out, and then come over and let's work on it. You know, like, everybody <laughs> needs that. You know, you can't just be like, oh, I'm such an angel. Oh, I just got betrayed. Oh, it's okay. No, it takes time. And yes, we need to go and just, you know, just express ourselves very authentically, accept ourselves, move through the, feel the emotion, you know, feel the pain, because life is about feeling, not just put it away, feel the pain. And then when you come to a place like, okay, I felt it, I've experienced it, now let me move to that next level of, of awesomeness. That's that's the, the journey. You talk a lot about clutter. Mm-hmm. I have a lot to say about clutter. <laughs> I have a class called Break Up With Your Belongings. Ooh. I, you know what? When I moved here, I broke up with all but nine boxes of my belongings. That is awesome. How did you feel, though? Was it scary It was good? so cleansing. There... I realized, oh, oh, I realized things like I had an attachment to this bread machine. <laughs> That's that is so, so silly. Cool. I had an attachment to a bread machine that my ex-husband had given me years and years ago, and 
it was a very nice bread machine, but I didn't even, I wasn't even eating bread at the, that point. I, I was staying away from carbs. But it, it, what it meant to me was times when family and friends would come and stay for the weekend, I would always set this machine mm -hmm. to have fresh bread waiting for us and in the morning. it smelled so good, yes, And it yes. smelled so good. And, and there, was, there was all of that wonderful morning time eating that fresh bread together mm -hmm. that I was so attached to that machine. And I got rid of things that, you know, had, were, had belonged to family members who had passed away. And so I got no rid of, you know, formal gowns that right. I knew I was never going to wear here. And those were so much easier than that, that freaking that bread, bread machine. machine. So what did you do? I got rid of it. Oh my God! And I got how rid of did it. you do it? What was the process? Um, I, you know what? I set it aside for a really long time while I was going through everything else because once the once the offer had been accepted to come here, mm -hmm. everything had to move very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was just going through everything in my home, and I set the bread machine aside for a little while, and I, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. And by the time I came back to it, I realized I've gotten rid of so many other things. And I did a lot of, you know, soul-searching and processing and crying. Yes, and, you know, yes. um, at a very exciting time in my life, I, I was, uh, and I also sold a lot of my things on Craigslist, mm -hmm. so little by little I watched people come into my home and take my things away. You know, which, which was a very good thing. And I realized after coming out of it, I lost weight during that period yeah, of time. I did too when I went to all my clutter clearing. And I, yeah, I talked with someone else just after I moved here. I met someone who had gone through almost the exact same thing to move onto a boat to be a, um, a deckhand. It was something he'd always wanted to do. And he asked me, he said, Did you lose weight while you were doing that? I said, Yeah, it was a lot of weight, yeah, figuratively. Because energetically, we hold on to things. Emotional things are in there. So energetically, we hold on to things to protect ourselves. So once you're able to process out a lot of that, you didn't need to hold on to the weight on your body anymore. Talk about it in my Destination Happiness book. Oh. Yeah, about clutter. And it's about, it's, and it's about clutter and weight and that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. And I am so very careful now that I've been here for two years and I've gathered things. I've gathered things out of necessity, mm -hmm. but, but uh, also there are some things that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very mindful of not bringing anything into my life that I do that not do need. Not, yeah, need. Yes, yes. Yeah, literally need or need, feel a need yes. for. Uh, I question those things, yeah, a lot more. And, um, not only because of the the weight that you have from it there's a there's a certain amount of responsibility you know if i want to go if i want to move into a different apartment i have to have room for all of this or this stuff yeah. has to go when that stuff is not what matters what matters is what you do from the time you wake up in the morning to yeah. the time you go back to bed yeah exactly exactly yeah um good we're in agreement <laughs> <laughs> um so at Happiness U, how, there's, a, there's a lot of classes on your list. Yes, we have um, over, we probably have 40 to 50 classes a month now. Okay, so each of these is going on, is like, like once or twice? Oh, every, I have 20 core classes, and this is all the 101 classes, so there's five physical classes. Physical would be things like healthy money mindset, clearing clutter, feng shui, um, that's like physical classes. Mental would be like banish stress and worry. Emotional would be like get over it. You know, sometimes you just have something you just can't get over. How do you let it go so you can move on with your life? Or, or irritating relationship clarity. Sometimes there's just people that bug you. And no matter what you do, they just bug you. So we look at why do they bug you? And I, I, it's, you know, the whole reflection principle. So we go through that. So these classes, there's 20 of them. One is offered every month. And every month we rotate it. Our school is open like uh, Monday. So usually uh, nights and we weekends so after work and on weekends mm -hmm. and um, yeah so in one each month and then every guest teacher will have different amounts of classes there people we, everything from understanding your pet to uh, having a, a healthier money um, what is it the millionaire mindset oh we even have one recently it's um it's called date smart you it's like a dating in the new millennium because now people don't know how to date and and such so the core of what we do is that internal happiness and balance. So it's almost like here we are with all the core classes. And then the guest teacher classes are all different things that maybe of interest to people. But sometimes people come, they feel a resonance with our vision and what we offer as far as life purpose. And they come in that way. So all of our classes are offered at least once a month. Oh, and if, it's, if you can't come on a Wednesday night, the next time it's offered on a Saturday. If you can't come on a Saturday, next time it's offered on a Saturday. So we just sort of rotate all the classes. Nice. Excellent. We're going to take another okay. break. We'll be right back. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series, and we'll be right back. 
Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics, empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone, bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho, a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company, and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hi, we're back and we're live. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series, coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu and very close to Kumukuhua Theater. And I'm talking with Alicina Way today. Um, uh, we were just talking about you know, your books and Happiness You. And let me, uh, let me ask, what do you think is the biggest struggle for most people that these classes address? Because we talked about clutter, mm -hmm. we talked about shame, mm -hmm. we talked about getting Guilt, being stuck. stuck. It's just, it's seriously across the board. Yeah. It's seriously, I mean, it's just everyone, and it, what's really interesting is, but what, what is across the board is that those who are looking to, um, to take their life to another level, to get some things managed, they, they, they'll come to classes. So I guess that doesn't really answer your question, but it's funny, like we look like, which is most, oh, you know what? Life purpose seems to be quite a, a, a more well attended class, Life Purpose 101, because everyone will say, What's my purpose in life? Wow, you what is the, my purpose? I'm waiting for this purpose. And you read books like uh, What Color is Your Parachute? And you take these classes, Myers Briggs, you're trying to find out who you are and what you should do. And so the purpose class is to understand that if you don't see that you're living a purpose right now, your purpose is not going to just hit you in the head as much as it is that you're searching and you're recognizing who you are and where you are making a difference. Because every single person is making a difference, even if they don't feel it. So if you can't see it, you're not going to be able to start to grow that purpose into something greater. So it's awareness, really. It's awareness. of. I, I, I worked with a really wonderful life strategist, Mark Ward, in Chicago, who helped me who asked me the question, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so, that is the hardest question yeah. to answer. That's why in my life book weekend workshops, we sit there and we, we talk about what is it you want and what is your purpose in life and where are you unique and different because we sometimes think we need to do like what others have done or we have this mindset or we think we can't change because we need to pay the bills and my heart is here but then my action is here so how do we merge the two so that you can be walking on a heart-centered path and it takes time and work because life is not easy and that's what, what 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 I'm trying to get at we all want life to be easy we want life to just just give us everything we want so that we can just be happy but the truth is life will never do that so you, when you stop expecting life to be something it's not then you can finally accept it for what it is and realize that if you just figure out who you are and what it is that you want in your life, everything else will orient around that. I've seen it happen time and time again. You know, if you think that you can't do it or it's way out there and I hate here, I, I hate where I am, I don't like where I am, I'm unhappy here, I want to be there. If you don't see something right here, you can't even find that thread to walk out. So a lot of times it's awareness more than anything. Yeah. I, I do think that when you are when you're operating within that awareness and in in, mm -hmm. in the moment mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and and in the flow yes, of the yes, universe yes. then everything does feel a lot easier it does and and it's accepting that it's just accepting life really it's that's really the key it's about accepting it not yeah. wanting wishing that this wasn't going on so let's say your your dear friend has a, a, an illness and is dying 
So that is bad, right? Everyone's like, that's bad, that's horrible, it could consume you. And I'm not saying that you have to like everything that life brings you, but the, the, if you take the time to say, how is this helping you? How is it serving you? How is it serving your friend? What awareness is coming? If you start to ask yourself questions, then the subconscious becomes conscious, the hidden comes to the surface, and then we can start to piece together a different reality based on new pieces of information. That's really, really all it is, is sometimes we suppress certain things and we, we, we don't see. We all see a different reality. So if I can help you see a, a better reality of a challenging situation, you feel better. That's, yeah, that's right there yeah. already. And you, nobody can make you do that except yourself. So I can only guide you, you know, but you're the one that has to see it. So part of what we do is we just try to throw out a bunch of options out there and help, help you to see. It's just information that you might not have ever heard in regards to your current situation. Mm. Do you think that once people really get to the bottom of what they really want, their heart really wants, that is their purpose? Yeah, I can say that. But I also think that we are living a purpose without realizing it. So the lack of awareness. So even when you look back on your life, when you could say, wow, well, before I knew I was in theater, but I wasn't doing the work that you're doing now, which is so near to your heart. Um, if you go back and you think about it, if you look back, you were serving a purpose somehow. You were nurturing others, you were teaching others, you were learning, you were growing. There are things you were doing that you just never really saw as being as important as now I can tell you it is. But then look, here you are living more on purpose than ever, but yet do you not still find challenges in your life? You know, do you not still have joys in your life? So no matter what, even if you're living some great purpose, it doesn't mean your life all of a sudden becomes like awesome, it's great. It's But when you're living on purpose, you're willing to, to manage those challenges challenges and you're willing to face those challenges because you're on path and that's why you don't get burned out when you're on your purpose because there's a purpose for the challenges on your greater vision of life right. whereas if you're living and you feel like you're not living a purpose then the challenges are even more stressful and more overwhelming and that's why it's hard to be happy because it's hard it's hard mm -hmm. well there's so many uh, so many artists that I talk with, they when they talk about the their particular art, they talk about losing time while they're immersed in it. Time mm -hmm. just doesn't matter. Yeah. You'll do whatever you have to do. Yeah. And we do it for, we've all done it for at least some length of time for no money whatsoever. Yeah. We squeezed it in wherever we could during you know the, the wee hours of the night because that is just a part of who we are. So right. it makes- And it serves a purpose because if you're doing it for the money, you would go get a job at McDonald's, but you're doing it so the value, so that's what happens. People don't realize that everything that you're doing or not doing is serving a purpose. You think you should be doing that, but you're not. What you are doing is serving a purpose. You have to look to see it because once you recognize it, you go, oh, that's why I'm still at this job because a security is super important to me and even though I want to be a musician, I want to work full time as a theater person, but I just can't, I, I'm waiting for that theater job, I'm waiting for that job to come to take me out of my misery. It's, it really, um, if you can look at your life in the moment and say, oh wow, yes that is my, 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 like, my inspiration, that is my path, but if you don't recognize why you are where you are, what your present situation is giving you, then you're not accepting life. So it's really, people always say they want this, they want that, they're waiting for the better job, they're waiting for more attention, whatever it is you're waiting for, that's good because that's awesome because you have this desire for something and you're wanting to bring that into your life, but, it, but to speed it up, it's really to say, well, this job is serving me. This, uh, the, why are you where you are? There's a reason. And if you can uncover that, that's sometimes a huge aha. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like not making a choice is making a choice. Yeah, yeah. And if you recognize the benefit of where you are versus wishing you were somewhere else, it changes your life. It just changes. Mm -hmm. What would you say, okay, now I'm going to have to ask you a question. There was a point in time uh, in my life when I felt very, very stuck. I was... Mm -hmm. uh, um, in a bad situation emotionally mm -hmm. with someone who did not treat me well mm -hmm. emotionally and I felt I just felt so stuck in yeah. the m mired in not feeling sorry for myself but feeling angry mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, ill used mm -hmm. and you know all of this what I'm 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 out of that now just so you know <laughs> but uh, how but would you help someone get through well, that I think part of it too is like first of all it's like you were, you were sort of in a place where you didn't want to be, right? Mm -hmm. But were you appreciating that time for what it was? See, everyone hates challenges and they want to be out. So you feel like, okay, he was mistreating me, he was this, he was that. What were some things you were, get, you were getting from it? Now in retrospect, what did you get from it? Did you start at questioning your self-worth? 
Yes. And as you start questioning your self-worth, did you not recognize, like, this is not the type of relationship you want to be in? You know, so mm -hmm. there were things that were going on at the time that you were not aware of. All you wanted was like, oh, I feel stuck, I can't. But if, if when you're stuck, it's simply because you're not ready to move forward because there's still a lesson to get within it. There's still something that you had to get in order to be able to be free. So there was still a greater benefit for being in that situation than the fantasy of being out of that situation, whether it was comfort, whether it was uncertainty about the future, whether it was this, whether there are subconscious things that were going on that were playing in the background. Your mind was like, I wanna get out of here, I don't deserve this, this is sucks, this is horrible. But at the time that you were going through that, you were there because you were, had a greater benefit. The moment that you, you realize that you're worth more than that or I can be okay with whatever that was that was the tipping point and that's when you started making changes so when people come to the get unstuck 101 we we first of all say you're not really stuck you just think you are you're just getting your your things are moving into the same situation over and over so what is that situation and what is it that you're getting from it mm. they, well nothing nothing no what are you getting there's something otherwise you know what it's like when it's time to go you go when when you want to do something you do it because there's a greater benefit and advantage to do it we always have the time, the money, and the energy to do the things that we want to do. That we so really want. we always do. We always do. So there's a greater benefit. You are you are experiencing something, greater security, greater something, familiarity. There's something going on that you felt was a greater benefit. Otherwise, you would have been up and gone. So it helped you to raise your self awareness. It helped you to get more value for who you are. Realize you didn't want to be treated this way. So you went through all this processing, and obviously at one point you moved out of it. It's because you recognized there was a greater benefit now to move forward. It just you just weren't ready. Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a break. <laughs> um, this is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. We'll be right back. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And uh, on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater, and I am talking with Alice Inouye, who is um, uh, an author. Uh, she is an astrologer, a, a feng shui expert, mm -hmm. artist, Life what do we guide, call it? happiness Life expert. Guide. We cut everything. I think it comes all under happy uh, I don't know I guess happiness expert or life guide just yeah living well yeah. cuz feng shui is such a small part of it Australia you know everything is it's really about yeah all the things that you need tools in your life so that you can be in the most divine path for yourself yeah. okay so let me ask you a question that is completely self-serving I'm gonna oh, use my it. time with you I live in a uh, an apartment building here downtown whose windows do not open so I do not get fresh air in my apartment, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, looking for ways to bring some fresh air somehow into my home, because I can feel it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's strictly canned air that has been in there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You can't just break the window and then go, oh my god, fix the window. I could. <laughs> but there's a greater benefit not to, because you would have to That's pay money right. to do that. So no, I think that you can only do what you can bring in plants if you can, you know, the idea, it's just there's, if what you can't change, you just say, okay, this is what is, how can I make it better, right? Because sometimes we lament over things that we wish were different, but hey, if you really wanted windows, you would move, but it's not a great enough benefit to move to get windows, so you're there. So I would just say, bring in plants, even if it's, um, because our brain creates scenarios based on things that we see, even if you brought in silk plants that look real, that would give the idea that there's oxygen, so you would start to feel, because when we're in the midst of fo foliage, there's oxygen that we can get from that. Mm. So just even if you just put plants in there. Okay, I Because yeah, you're, there's nothing else we can do, you know, a fan, but it's the same recycled air. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. Um, and sometimes, well, yeah, 
I, I'm also sharing vents with people around me. <laughs> we don't have to go into that anymore. There's a couple things that um, I pulled out of your books that oh, cool. I would like to read. Okay, sounds good. One is that it's just a piece of a lovely poem by Derek Walcott. Mm -hmm. uh, the time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror and each will smile at the other's welcome. I know, isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. Yeah, it was a, a, a client came in and he had found him, himself in a certain sense and he was out looking for all these relationships and when it came down to it, he just really realized it was the relationship with himself that he was looking for and he brought me this poem and said that this is a poem that really resonated with him and he brought it just at the time I was writing chapter two of Be Happy that was, it was, you know, it's, I have a picture, I drew those pictures by the way, those little pictures <laughs> and it's about a girl looking in the mirror and, and the girl says, um, where have you been all my life? And then the image in the mirror back says, waiting for you. So it was kind of like, we need to find ourselves first before we can find how we can be of service to other people. Mm. Mm. Um, oh, this really resonated with me. Being self-centered is a spiritual practice. Much spirituality focuses on self-centeredness. In meditation, the great prophets and sages received their revelations when they were totally engrossed in a state of self-centeredness. I have never thought of meditation that way. Oh, interesting. I have never thought of meditation that way. And I was, you know, I'm a good Lutheran girl. I was raised in the Midwest, and self-centeredness mm -hmm. is bad. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, don't be selfish. Yeah. Think about everyone else. They're yeah. lumped together, uh, uh, necessarily selfish and self-centered. Mm -hmm. And you break them apart. Yeah, because we're so, we're such, we each, every single person has amazing wisdom. Every single person has all that they need all the information they need to live the life that they want to live. We somehow look outside for that. We go to guides, we go to people where like everyone knows more, but when, we, when we're when we self-centered, we take ourselves and we center on ourselves and we ask ourselves what it is we want, like in that conversation I had with myself, that you know, some great wisdom comes through. And so I, I think it has to be equal. Self-centeredness is good, but we also need to have altruism. So narcissism and altruism and equality creates balance. So if it's too much about me, then that doesn't work either. Too much about you, I'm gonna lose my energy. So we have to have that balance. So yeah, so a meditation to me is like that, centering myself so I can get the greatest information possible so then I can go out and share it with other people so I can be altruistic and narcissistic and still create a balance in my life. Okay, fabulous. You offend or hurt yourself by using unfavor unfavorable situations to allow yourself to generate negative emotions and thoughts. What a sentence that you is. You offend or hurt yourself by using unfavorable situations to allow yourself to generate negative emotions and thoughts. I must have been in a very self-centered stage when I write that. That's like interesting. I, I think that is amazing, Alice. When you uh, when you you hurt yourself by using those situations to it's sort of like yeah. not to talk about it, about them again, but it's sort of like the pain body that Eckhart yes, Tolle talks yes, about. Yes, I know. Yes. Yeah, and it's funny how that's how we are. So the awareness is key. So let's say you come to me and you're in a state of negative emotion and thoughts and you're just hurting yourself. At least I can bring you and say, hey, look, focus right here. Look at this right here. And then you can start to change that looping because otherwise we loop in that and we just mm -hmm. basically sadomasochistically just keep beating ourselves up internally. And so sometimes we need to bring what's unconscious and unaware conscious into the surface so that we can redefine and create a new map of our reality. Because when we're stuck in that situation, our reality sucks. It's self-perpetuating. Oh my God, it is painful. Yeah. And it becomes comfortable. Yeah, so we get pain. in there and guess what we get from it? We get social support, we get all these people coming, they feel bad, they bring us cookies, they try to support you. So when you're down on yourself, other people come to support you. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize that. It's very interesting. Mm. So we run to support other people who are down on themselves. Yeah, yeah, naturally. think about it. Yeah, if you're down, I'm going to lift you up. I'm down, you're going to lift me up. That's just natural. We're always trying to bring balance to our environment, to the people in the environment. Everything is about balance. We have a North Pole and a South Pole. Everything is balanced. It's just our perspective of it that's different. But if you watch the dynamics of any situation, people are always trying to bring it to balance. You could be driving with your, your, your two kids in the back. You're fighting, fighting, fighting. The moment, and you're yelling, stop fighting. The moment the mom and dad fight, the kids shut up. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just, there's always a dynamic going on, always. Like if I come in and I say like, oh, you look horrible. You'll be like, what do you mean? This is a nice shirt I bought. If I come in and I go, oh my God, that's the most beautiful shirt. You go, oh, no, no, no. It's just something I, I, I picked up, right? Uh -huh. So we're always, we're always running. Everything we do and say and be and interact is all trying to find balance. And if you see the balance, then you could see situations that are out of balance. Oh, 
I know, deep, yeah. That was good. Yeah, deep, but it's good. It's really good stuff. <laughs> What's your website is Your Happiness Yeah, Your you. Happiness You. So you is in, it's like Happiness University, but it's Your Happiness You, the letter U dot com. And then if I can add, you know, on my website right now, I just uploaded this. Um, I did a, a forecast, a 2014 forecast. It's a video, and you, you can purchase it on the site uh, for $15, but it's two hours of a video of me doing a live presentation about 2014, and some of the stuff we talk about, you know, it's kind of planetarily based about planetary positions, but it's like it's like what people are going through now and how to navigate and, and sort of the things I've been talking about. Uh -huh. Okay, but awesome. On my website. You can find that there, and you also do, uh, do you still do private... Uh, I do. There's a long, long waiting list, but I do, and um, yeah, it's just you just you kind of get on in the in the queue. We have we have a queue, and then um, we do that because I can only do maybe 50 people a month now because I have the school at night. Yeah. Yeah. How awesome for you that you have a long queue to get into. You That's know, it wonderful. is. One. I'm so blessed, and I've trained three people, um, mentors over the last couple, mentorees over the last, mentees over the last two years or so, so they're all up and ready to go. So we have faster if you want to get um, one of the girls to do it, and then they're fa they, they can even do it sooner at a much lower lower um, price point. Ah, uh, yeah. gotcha. I, I'm really happy about your success. Thank I'm really you. happy Thank that you, you came here. I'm happy that you donated the book to yeah. our silent auction so that I could buy it and learn from it and, uh, and meet you. And I have to wrap up now. I love synchronicity. Thank you, Donna, yes. for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to read now. Um, oh, I'm Donna Blanchard of Kumukuhua Theater. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. And we've been talking with Alice in a way of Happiness You. Um, thank you to our production manager, Ian Davidson, who is in my ear, to um, Chrissy Goffigan, who is our communications director, and to Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. Thank you to you for listening and watching. Check us out on thinktechhawaii.com. That's where you can get into all of our archives as well as watch our live shows. And also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. 